Early on in Through New Eyes, Jim Jordan uh, highlights the co continuity or parallel and the al analogy, if you will, between the pattern of creation, the pattern of history, and the pattern of the Eucharistic rite. Uh, throughout the creation week, God takes hold of the world, uh, the world as it then exists. He rearranges it, restructures it in some way. First of all, it's dark. Then he speaks light into existence and he rearranges light and darkness, puts them into a pattern. He assigns new names. Uh, he sits back and enjoys and describes it as good. The next day he's doing it again. He's reaching into the world. He's restructuring it. He's putting back, he tears it apart. He's putting it back together in a new way. He's giving it a new name. Uh, he's uh, enjoying uh, what he's done on that day and describing it as good. That pattern is the pattern of history, Jim shows. Uh, God reaches into the mosaic world. It's been corrupted by the sin of the priests and God's going to tear it apart. He literally tears apart the tabernacle and it's never put back again. He tears apart that social and political world. Uh, and then it gets rearranged. There are new things that happen. New names are assigned. The names of the sections of the tabernacle are not the na same names that are that are used for the temple. There are, it's not most holy place, holy place and court. There are different names that are given to those same regions of the, of the temple. Uh, there's new names given and then God uh, enjoys and gives satis and takes satisfaction in the new thing that he's produced. Uh, that's very much the same pattern that Jesus uh, uses when he goes through the, the Eucharistic rite. He takes the bread, he breaks the bread, he offers the bread, he renames the bread. So he's restructured the bread and he renames it, this is my body. Uh, and then his disciples receive it and enjoy it. He does the same thing with the blood. Uh, and the Eucharistic rite is following that new creation pattern. It's following the pattern of history. Uh, a couple of brilliant things that Jim does with this analogy. One is to indicate how this new creation, this modification of creation pattern is at work in every human action. Everything we do in the world follows this pattern. We begin our day, we take hold of the day, we rearrange things. Uh, we make things different, however marginally. At the end of the day, it's never the same as it was before. We re rearrange things. We might assign new names to things during the course of the day. We sit back at the end of the day and we enjoy what we've accomplished. And then the next day we're doing it again. You think about uh, creating anything. You bake a cake, you're taking the ingredients. Uh, you're uh, uh, tearing them from their original state and you're mixing them together in a new state. And then you uh, give it a new name. Now it's a cake. It wasn't, it's not just flour and butter and other things. Now it's a cake. And now it is something to be enjoyed. It's something new that's come into the world. We're constantly doing this. We're co-creators we're co with God, constantly modifying the creation, uh, which uh, greatly enhances our understanding of even the, the smallest thing that we do in the world. We recognize that uh, we, we can't help but imitate the creator in every single thing that we do and imitate the Creator in very specific ways, following this pattern that Jim has identified. The other thing he does with it by uh, highlighting the parallel with the Eucharistic Rite is to show how the Eucharistic Rite kind of reorients us and retools us for engagement with the world. Because what Jesus does in the Eucharist is not just take hold of the world, take hold of bread and break it and distribute it and rename it and enjoy it. He takes hold of the bread and gives thanks and then breaks it. He takes the cup of wine and he gives thanks and then he distributes it, he renames it and then it's enjoyed. There's a, a Eucharist, a, a thanksgiving that's inserted into our, our work in the world. If we're, the, the Eucharist is training us for proper creation, for pop, proper creativity in the world, for how to modify the world in ways that are honoring to God. And at the center of that is reversing the ingratitude of Adam and giving thanks for what God has given to us. Every week as we come to the Lord's table, uh, we're being shown uh, in a ritual form what we're doing every day of the week. But what's uh, highlighted, what's inserted into that is this, uh, is this call to Eucharist, this call to uh, Thanksgiving. And so it, uh, in the way that Jim presents it, the Eucharist is not an isolated ritual, special kind of island of sanctity in a world that's secular. Uh, rather, the Eucharist is a concentrated ritual that summarizes and uh, reorients us to the work that we do in the world all the time. Uh, that's, that's, I think, one of, the, one of the most important insights that Jim gives us in Through New Eyes, a way of uh, in incorporating Eucharist uh, into our lives, a way of living Eucharistically.